If a man cannot financially support his children, we put him in jail. If a woman cannot financially support her children, we give her money. If an adult male gets a 14-year-old girl pregnant, he goes to prison because that girl is not mature enough to make sexual decisions. If an adult female gets pregnant seducing a 14-year-old boy, she can sue him for child support because he is legally responsible. In Michigan and most other states, if a man and a woman who are both legally adults mutually decide to have sex while drunk, the woman is not legally responsible for her decision. The man is legally responsible for both their decisions. Women cannot be drafted. 99% of U.S. combat deaths are male. Men, on average, receive a 63% longer prison sentence than women do in the same court with the same offense and with the same criminal history. Women are twice as likely to avoid incarceration completely. Nationwide, women commit 10% of all murders, yet only 2.9% of executions are of women. In Michigan, if a woman falsely accuses a man of rape and he's convicted, he faces life imprisonment and if paroled, will be registered as a sex offender for life. If she's exposed, she faces a maximum of four years and a $2,000 fine. Lifeboat seats are still given to women before men. The federal government offers research funds for breast cancer at $26,000 per death and prostate cancer at $13,000 per death, half of what women are, and colon cancer at $6,800 per death. In divorce cases in which a woman desires custody, courts will award it to her in over 82% of cases without any consideration of parental suitability. The government will then allow the father to visit his own children. A growing quantity of sociological research shows the best interest of the child is dual custody. In the rare instances when fathers are awarded custody and women are ordered to pay child support, the children will receive less money than in comparable reversed situations. Women that do not pay child support are incarcerated at one-eighth the rate of men. Even if intent to commit fraud is demonstrated in court, a woman faces no legal repercussions for knowingly and falsely naming any man the father of her child in order to seek child support. When an ex-wife is suspected of infidelity, it is illegal for a father that pays child support to get a paternity test without the permission of the mother or the order of a judge. The Bradley Amendment requires men to continue to pay child support after a DNA test has proven that the child is not theirs and after that test is recognized as conclusive by a court. While feminists complain about the lack of women in the top 2 or 3% of jobs, which 97% of men don't have either, they seldom mention that men also hold almost all of the lowest paying, most dangerous, and dirtiest jobs. Today, men hold almost all of jobs with risk of loss of life. 93% of workplace fatalities are male. Almost no women work in coal mines, on high voltage lines, in garbage dumps, digging ditches, pumping septic tanks, on rooftops, etc. 57.7% of college enrollment goes to women. The Violence Against Women Act of 1994 mandates that an officer responding to a call of domestic violence make an arrest, but only if the claim is made by a woman. When a man calls the police after being the victim of a domestic assault, he is three times more likely to be arrested than the perpetrator of the crime.
The Violence Against Women Act of 1994 mandates that the taxpayer foot the legal bills for victims of domestic assault if the victim is female. Men are on their own. Women commit 34% of domestic violence, yet the United States has only one home for male assault victims. 64% of domestic violence hotlines are actually told to turn away male victims seeking help. Operators of help hotlines actually connect many male victims to perpetrators' programs. Most surgeons feel they must get a wife's written permission before performing a vasectomy on a married man. Men have no say in a woman's reproduction. And if any of this bothers you, you can be called a rape apologist.